really gets all up in your feels. <laughs> Happy birthday, Journey Church. We are almost a teenager. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But the number 12 in the Bible represents completeness. And the truth is, I, I don't exactly know what that means either. But this I do know. What started with 13 people in a living room is just getting started. What started with 13 people in a living room is just getting started. What God did in the past and what God wants to do in the future is so big, no pastor, no person, or group of people can take credit for it. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, Now to him, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Imagination is one of the greatest gifts God gives to us. Understand, imagination is the ability to create and see things in your mind. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In other words, Creator God, who has always existed, stepped through the portals of time and told nothing to become something, and it did. Let that sink in. God told nothing to become something, and it did it. Let that sink into your soul today. God imagined in His mind the world, the universe, the cosmos, the heavens. And then he spoke them into existence. The Bible says in Psalms 33, the Lord merely spoke. No pre-existing material. And the heavens were created. He breathed the word. And the Bible says all the stars were born. The invisible God spoke the visible into existence. The Bible says he assigned the sea its boundaries and locked the oceans in vast reservoirs. Let the whole world fear the Lord and let everyone stand in awe of him. I look back over these 12 years and I stand in awe of everything that God has allowed us to be a part of. And I can't wait to see what God has for us in the future. The Bible says, for when he spoke, the world began, it appeared at his command. God imagined it in his mind, then he spoke the world, the universe, into existence. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to whose, whose power? His power. Understand, none of this is possible that we've experienced in 12 years without His power. According to His power that is at work within us. God chooses to use us, His church, His people. He gave us the ministry of reconciliation, but it's His power. It's His power. God planted the Journey Church in my mind June 2006. We were five years away from being financially secure for the rest of our lives. But God had a different plan. And I'll never forget the day God said, I want you to move home and start a church. I, I said back to God, God, you've lost your mind. You've got the wrong Daryl. I've never pastored a church. I, I don't have a seminary degree. I, I've got a, a diploma from Fernandina Beach High School. I, I, didn't finish, I didn't finish college. I said, God, I can't do it. And God said back to me, you're right, you can't, but I can. I can, Daryl. God said, I can do it. And I want to show people how powerful I am when I use a nobody like you. God said, Daryl, do you Trust me. And I remember writing in my journal, I finally waved the white flag and I said, God, I trust you. And God said, go home and plant a church. 13 people became 30. And we launched the Journey Church on April 8, 2007. And 168 people showed up. Uh, many of those were our family and they've never been back. <laughs> not sure what that says about me, but <laughs> praise God, go God. 
that nine people gave their life to Christ that first day. Incredible. The next Sunday, we had 104 people. And the dream God planted in my mind was now a reality. I love birthdays, don't you? Because we can look back and remember when. Kind of like the old country song by Alan Jackson, I, I remember when. I was young and so were you and time stood still and love was all I knew. Can I be honest? I'm going to be. <laughs> I hate country music. <laughs> I know, I know for some of you that's heresy and you're like, we're never coming back here again. The boy hates country music. I don't, I don't get it. I, I grew up in a house where my mom wore out her eight tracks of Loretta Lynn, Dolly Parton, Glenn Campbell, Freddie Fender. <laughs> wasted days and wasted nights. <laughs> you know what was wasted? The eight track that was made of that song. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, in a cold sweat singing, I'm a rhinestone cowboy. <laughs> It's crazy. It's seared in the brain, Brad. I mean, it won't go away. You see, there's nothing wrong with celebrating what was as long as we, we don't forget what's next. We can get so lost in what was, we will wander around in, in the wilderness like the children of Israel, and we'll miss what God has next. Many of those people died off. What was supposed to be an 11-day journey, some of them never made it. In fact, I want to share with you some of the highlights, some of the miracles God has done through his people at the Journey Church these last 12 years. Can I do that? Is that okay? In August of our first year, we took some of our staff and key volunteers to Catalyst in Atlanta. And the last speaker for the conference was Pastor Francis Chan. Actually, some of our men are going through a Bible study right now by Francis Chan. And he talked about how it's the church's responsibility to take care of the poor. It's not the government's. And I remember we got in the van and we were headed back home. And I was so convicted by that message. And I, I was just thinking what, what we need to do as a church. And I remember Greg Gardell, who was our executive pastor at the time, and God has moved him out of here over to Kingsland St. Mary's, and he planted a church, and God is doing great things through Greg. It's so awesome. But I remember Greg said, hey, hey, man, you, you're quiet. What, what's going on? I said, man, I, I'm so convicted by that message. I feel like God wants us to go home and take $10,000 out of our account and buy $100 gift cards from Publix and take them to the poor areas in our community and Greg said well how much money do we have in the account <laughs> and I said 12,000 <laughs> he said let's do it and so we did we went home and we bought those $100 cards and then on a Saturday we took some teams out and we went out and knocked on some doors and we handed people those cards and we said no strings attached we just want to share the irresistible love of Jesus Christ and one of the stories that came out of that was uh, one of uh, the families knocked on someone's door and they opened the door and they handed them the card. And the people just started weeping. And they said, we were uh, dumpster diving last night looking for food for our family. And I remember going home that night and just celebrating everything that God had done and celebrating being obedient to, to, to God's conviction in my life. And I was reading through the book of Proverbs. And I came to Proverbs 21, verse 13, where the Bible says, If a man shuts, the ears, uh, shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out and not be answered. I had read that verse uh, at least a hundred times, church. But this time I, I stopped and I, I just looked at the words on the pages and I, I read it again. If a man shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out and not be answered. In that moment, I felt the Spirit of God ask me, Daryl, do you trust me? Do you trust me? And I said back to God, I trust you. We just took $10,000 out of our account. I think that you know we trust you. I, I trust you. And God said, you did that. 
You, you had the resources. You had the money in the bank. Do you trust me? I said, God, I trust you. And I felt like God was saying, Daryl, I want you to make sure no child in Yuli or Fernandina goes without Christmas. I'm thinking, it's August. And, and I know it's going to cost a lot of money for that to happen. And I remember going to our staff and we sat down at the table and I, I said, I, I feel like this is what God wants us to do. And so let's dream what that would look like if, if God allowed us to be a part of the, the super, if we'll just do the natural. And we, start, we started dreaming. We said, okay, let's narrow down the gifts to three. A kid wants a bike, an iPod, or skateboard. Uh, they want a new outfit. They want new Nike tennis shoes. And, and we wanted to provide a meal for the entire family. We then sent a mailer out to every house in Yuli and Fernandina that said, if you can't afford Christmas, not a problem. It's on the Journey Church. <laughs> Over 800 kids registered and now we knew it was going to cost us approximately a hundred and twenty thousand dollars and so I shared this crazy God idea with our church and I told them next week we're going to come back and take up an offering <laughs> and I remember going home and telling Kara I said nobody's coming back <laughs> we had about 225 people at that time and I'm thinking we're six months old and people are going to think oh my gosh this pastor's lost his mind he, he, no I, I'm, I'm going to another church we come back the next Sunday the house is packed we take up an offering and we raise $119,780 to the glory of God Now, fast forward four years. The church is growing. God is changing and transforming lives and marriages, and people are finding freedom, and, and we need more space. And, and we hear that Blockbuster is going out of business. Bad for Blockbuster, good for us. And so I called the leasing agent and told him we, we wanted that space. We wanted to take that 5,000 square feet and, and, and add to our building. He said, make an offer. We've done this in the past. You've done this three times. Make an offer, and I'll send the proposal to the owner. And so we put a proposal together, and he sent it to the owner, and he, he countered, and then we countered back. And then I remember Bob called me. He said, he said Daryl, we, we need to talk. And I said, okay, talk. He said, no, no, face to face. I said, what's going on? He said, face to face. And so I met him for lunch, and we sat down, and he said, hey, listen, man, I sent that last proposal to the owner, and he came back and said, listen, no more proposals. In fact, I, I don't want to renew the lease. The church has one year to get out. I, I was like, what? How do we go from adding space to having to leave in one year? He said, I don't know. We had about 400 people. The church is four years old. The economy, it's not good. So I gathered together 21 men, and we went on a 21-day Daniel fast, just like we're doing now leading up to Easter, fasting and praying for six miracles in our church. The first miracle we were praying for, land. We didn't have land. I I'm thinking uh, we're going to become the tent church, like just find an area, put up a tent. Uh, the second thing we're praying for is bank favor. We had turned over our financials to a bank. Number three, we were praying for a worship leader. We were transitioning through uh, worship leaders. Number four, we were praying for Shea Sellers, who had melanoma. We were praying for Bill Kearney, who had prostate cancer. And number six, we were praying for 100 people to give their life to Christ that Easter 2011. And can I just hit the pause button for one second and talk about Easter 2019? I, I think that everybody has a card in your seat. This is a great invite card to invite your friends, family, neighbors, uh, enemies, frenemies. I, I don't care. Invite people to one of our three Easter experiences. I'm going to do a message entitled The Goat. I know that our world calls a lot of people the goat. Well, there's only one goat, the greatest of all time, and his name is Jesus. And so I I'm going to redefine greatness on Easter Sunday. And so invite, invite, invite. And also, as you're leaving, 
um, going out the front, you'll see some uh, uh, yard signs. Grab one of those and put them in your yard. That would be awesome, okay? Let's move on. In those 21 days, someone donated these 40 acres to the church. That, that should excite you. Someone donated 40 acres to the church. It's crazy. We hired a new worship leader. The bank said your financials look good for a four-year-old church. And so we will loan you $1.5 million if you can raise $1.5 million. Easter 2011, 125 people gave their life to Christ. We were praying for 100. Two weeks later, I started a four-week capital campaign. Four weeks, not four years, not four months. A four-week capital campaign called The Future Is Now, Right Now. And we need to raise $1.5 million in four weeks. On the fourth week, we took up an offering with approximately 325 people, adults, and we raised $1.48 million. To God be the glory. Bill Kearney is still with us today. He's one of our deacons. Jay Sellers took his last breath on planet Earth April 3rd, 2012. And a lot of people said Shay lost his battle with cancer. I say he won it. I say he won his battle. And Shay and Alice and their family showed up at the journey week two of our existence. He later told me that we got the uh, card in the mail for Easter, but I thought, yeah, I'm not going to try a new church on Easter, so we'll go the second week. (laughs) And I have so many memories of Shay and his friendship and his leadership as part of this church. But two memories stick out in my mind. The first one is the night before our 21 days of fasting and praying ended. As we're leaving, Shay pulled me off to the side, and he said, Pastor Darrell, I want you to know the hundred people that we're praying for to receive Christ this Easter is more important than my healing. And I remember I looked at him, and I said, no, sir. No, it's not. He said, yes, it is. He said, I know where I'm going. They don't. In that moment, Shay taught a very young pastor about eternity. The second memory is two days before his death, Shay told his wife Allison on his deathbed to make sure the church gets the other $50,000 they pledged for the new building. He's taking his last breath, and he's still thinking about the church. He's still thinking about people. The very reason we named this auditorium the Shea Sellers Auditorium. God has used this church for his glory to build his kingdom. Some people God has sent through the Journey Church for a season, for a chapter of their life. And I am thankful and grateful for every person God has sent through the Journey Church. I'm thankful for their sacrifice. I'm thankful for their time of serving and giving. God sends some people through the Journey Church, and God God has sent some people to the Journey Church. People who have put down roots and said, I'm with you through the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is my church family, and I am with you. For those people, I am so grateful. I'm thankful that you have allowed this pastor to make mistakes, to learn from my mistakes, but you stayed. Thank you. Thank you. I look back over these 12 years, and I am blown away how God has multiplied this work. I never dreamed it would be this big. I never dreamed we would have multiple locations. 
I never dreamed that God would send people out of here to plant other churches. I never imagined over 2,200 people would give their life to Christ in 12 years. 2,200 people to the glory of God. That's crazy. Over 1,400 baptisms. I think back to everything God has done in Psalms 115 verse 1 floods my soul, Brad. Where the Bible says, to you alone, O Lord, to you alone and not to us, must glory be given because of your constant love and faithfulness. God did it. Everything you see, God did it. To God be the glory. Give God praise today for what he's done in this house. Give God praise. God gets all the glory. God gets all the glory for what was and for what's next. And I believe, Journey family, the best is yet to come. I believe that with all of my heart. I really do. In fact, I believe that what we see in the next five years will be greater than what we experienced in 12 years. I believe that. But it's going to take all of us. And so here's the $10,000 question. What will it take from us to experience what God has next for the Journey Church? I believe there's two principles that we, the Journey Church, must live out if we want to see God do the supernatural. Two things. Number one, write this down. We have to live out the Christian life. We have to live out the Christian life. On Easter 2007, I preached a message entitled, What If... What if what happened in here, the book of Acts, happened here? The Bible says in Acts 2.47, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. How? How did that happen? Every day someone was telling someone else their Jesus story. That's how it multiplies. The greatest tool we have is our testimony. It's the Jesus story. I used to be this before Jesus, but now I'm this because of him. As Christians, we, we should serve God out of delight, not duty. It's not a duty. We, we should delight in the life that God has given us. The church is not a club. The church is not an organization or an institution. The church is a body of believers, a living, breathing organism commissioned to go and tell the world about Jesus. That, that's what God has given to us. Newsflash, Jesus did everything that needed to be done on the cross when he said, it is finished. In other words, you don't add anything to the gospel. It's all about Jesus, only Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus alone saves. That's it, Jesus. Not church attendance, not any denomination. Jesus saves. That's it. Jesus said to his disciples in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will obey what I commanded. Again, it goes back to uh, delighting in obedience versus duty of obedience. It's not a duty. When, when you realize how much God loves you, when you realize how much grace was shown to you, you can't help but love God. You can't help but love other people. Jesus said, go and make disciples. That was his vision. His commandment to his church. That's why we say at the Journey Church, love God, love people, make disciples. God's vision is all about a commitment, an opportunity to do something great for God, for his glory. Not ours, but his. The Bible, the Bible is crystal clear in the book of Proverbs 29, verse 18. The Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision... The people perish. The very reason 8 out of 10 church plants don't make it. The reason 80% of churches today have plateaued or are declining. There's no vision. I love how the Message Bible paraphrases Proverbs 29. It says, if people can't see what God is doing, they will stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are blessed. 
I don't know about you, but I want to be blessed. Do you want to be blessed, Journey Church? Listen, we don't exist for ourselves. We exist for others. We exist for those who don't know Christ. We exist for those who are far away from God. We exist for those who are still walking in darkness but need to walk in light. And here's the deal. When you lose sight of this truth, the music will bother you. When you lose sight of this truth, uh, people telling you where to park will bother you. When you lose sight of this truth, uh, people telling you where to sit will bother you. People talking about money will bother you. And by the way, the Journey Church is not broke. That's not why we talk about money. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The Journey Church is blessed. We are blessed because of God's people who are obedient to the tithe and giving above the tithe. The Journey Church is not broke. God is not broke. God's not broke. In fact, God doesn't want your money. God wants your heart. God wants your heart. God wants to be first in every area of your life. Listen, if you are a Christ follower, if you are a believer, Bible thumper, whatever name, whatever tag you want to put on yourself, Jesus saved you to make a difference. He he didn't save you to just exist. If that was true, he, he didn't save you to just take you to heaven. Right? If he saved you to just give you heaven, you'd be in heaven right now. But you're not. That means there's work to be done. He created you to make a difference. The Bible says in Mark 5, 19, go home to your family and friends. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has mercy on you. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, this is from the Living Bible. I love this, this translation. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Jesus said to his followers in the book of Mark, go everywhere into the world and tell the good news to everyone. Number one, we have to live out the Christian life. Number two, we have to be a church that looks like heaven. We have to be a church that looks like heaven. That's our prayer in 2019. That's the task that God has given to us. Jesus prayed for his church to be one. Seven times in the book of Acts, the early church was described as being in one accord. The question is, are we willing to make the sacrifices necessary to be united? To be unified as one body, one race, united together by one spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 7, every tribe, nation, people, tongue, and race will be gathered around the throne. Get a picture of that. Around the throne of God, singing, worthy is the Lamb of God that was slain. All people worshiping God together as one. Truth, download this into your heart and soul today. The church on earth should look like heaven. I think I'll say that one more time. The church on earth should look like heaven. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, my kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Journey family, God promised this house a double portion of his anointing. Not this pastor, not this staff, this house. A double portion of his anointing if we will do the natural. If we will do the natural. Listen, if we want to experience the greater things God has for us, we have to separate ourselves from the things that hold us back. We have to let those things go. Romans 12, 9 says, to hate what is evil and to cling to what is good. Journey family, God has great plans for this house. 2019 is about to get cray-cray. It's about to get cray-cray up in the house. We are not far from sharing with you what God has next. God is moving. And we need some of you, hold on, wake up, for those of you who have been drifting, we need some of you to say yes to serving. We need some of you to move from your seat to serving. We need some of you to get up off your blessed assurance And be a part of what God is doing in this house. And we have plenty of opportunities for everyone. And so if you call the Journey Church home, 
I am asking you, begging you, to sign up today and serve on one of our teams. Can you sacrifice one time per month to be a part of the body of Christ? If you call the Journey Church home and you're not serving, is this really your home? One time per month. I promise you, once you start serving once, you will be like, I love serving with those people. Uh, there's so much joy. There's so much passion. Pastor, I, I want to do this twice now. We have some people that serve every single week. Every single week. And so at this time, I'm going to call my bride up here. My beautiful boo. <laughs> if you want to know the secret to the success outside of God, that's her. What a blessing. Behind every okay pastor is a great pastor's wife. And so I, I'm going to share with you some of our needs. And so everybody should have one of these cards in your seat. Go ahead and grab it. If you have a pen, grab it because you're going to use that in just a moment. Our Journey Kids area, primary elementary, we need 13 people. Our Journey Kids infants through preschool, we need 40 for a Sunday and 99 needed for each month. Journey students, now, Journey students, you serve every week, okay, needs 10 people. Our safety team needs 12 people. Thank you, safety team, for protecting us and having eyes and seeing things that we don't see. Uh, we need a uh, guest experience team needs 20 people for our parking lot, 16 people to drive golf carts. That's if you have a good driving record. Um, <laughs> we need 60 people. We, we had someone early on throw people off the golf cart, and so we don't need that again. Um, 60 people for our welcome team, uh, 12 for refuel, uh, 25 for our auditorium, 19 people uh, for our kids check-in, uh, 10 people for campus support, 27 people for our worship team, 11 people for our student worship team, 27 for our kids worship, 22 people for our product production team. And then we also have a photography team, a video team, and an outreach team that serves over here every Tuesday morning, Tuesday night. Um, <laughs> And Thursday, right? Tuesday, Tuesday night, Thursday. And we serve over 700 families every week uh, just being able to give back to them food. And so we need help over there. And so at this time, Kara wants to share something about taking that next step into leadership. Yes, some of you may be serving, but God has gifted you to lead. Maybe you've led in other environments. Maybe, um, you know, Scripture talks about leadership being a spiritual gift. If you feel like that's you, we have an opportunity for you as well. On that card, just check leadership. And what we're going to ask you to do in just a moment, when you leave here, we're going to ask you to go to the left. Left. Go, go to left. the left. Walk out of these doors and go to the left, go to the left. out to the Airnasium. We have an amazing team left. expo set up for you out there to meet all of our team leads. Drop off your Say Yes to Serving card. And then we have a birthday party at the other end of the Airnasium. We have birthday cake. Birthday cake. Birthday cake, popsicles, all fruit popsicles for yes, those of you who are Daniel pleasure. Fasting. We have an option for you. Um, but we just want to hang out, spend some time together. If you, are, um, if you have kids in the back, go to the Team Expo, drop off your card, grab your kids, and then go to the party so our team members back there can, can jump in as well. You know, it's easy to come in each week, and if you come in and you attend worship, uh, to think that everything is covered because we have such amazing team members right now who are covering multiple weeks, multiple areas, but this is the reality, that there are so many places for you to jump in and plug in so that we can be healthy moving forward into what God has for for us next. So we have a, a video we want to share with you, uh, introducing you to all of our team uh, team leads. Grab a pen. Watch the video while you're filling out the card. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Fill out your card. Hello, my name is Tom. Everybody, I'm a student pastor here at the Journey Church. My wife and I, Heather, are a part of the Next Gen team. The Next Gen team ministers to kids from birth through 12th grade. Journey Church believes in investing in kids. Our students and kids are being molded by the world around them, being shaped by the things happening around them. Here at the Next Gen Ministries, we want to do what we can to reach them with the irresistible love of Christ. I'm Kristen Rhodes, and I'm the preschool coordinator, and I serve on the Next Gen team. 
In a world that wants kids to grow up way too fast, we get to not just simply serve on Sunday, but truly invest in these families and in these kids for life change. Hi, my name is Brian Simpkins. I'm the children's pastor, and this is a stepping stool. How many of you guys remember how important this device was when you were younger? This thing gave us access to places we never could have gotten before. It helped us feel grown up. It, it helped us reach new levels. And yet over time, we've lost the passion for that stool and its importance. Serving in a next-gen ministry is a lot like the stool. For the kids, it's a way to help them feel closer to God. But for you, it's probably the opportunity to help you reach a new spiritual level that maybe you haven't before by serving. After all, serving requires that you give of yourself. It's your commitment to God to help others. It's possible that up till now, you may have placed the things of God on a shelf out of reach. It's also possible that up till now, you may not have realized that what God wants for you is to serve the next generation. Each and every one of us are called and burdened with something. Our question is, do you have that same calling and burden on your heart and in your life for the next gen? We need coaches, leaders, moms and dads to raise students with the biblical concepts that are found in the scriptures. So if you have a burden in the calling for the next generation, join our team. Romans 12, 11 says to never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. I can't help but smile when I say that word enthusiastic. My name is Brandon and I'm a part of the creative team. We're enthusiastic about the message of Jesus that we get to share with the world, and we're enthusiastic about the part that we get to play in that. And we would love for you to be a part of that too. No matter who you are, what skills you may or may not have, we're dedicated to finding a space on our team just for you. Hi, my name is Abby, and I lead the photography team here at church. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and our team exists to capture the excitement and joy that someone can experience when they walk through our doors. Whether you know how to use a camera or you've never picked one up and you want to learn, we would love to have you as a part of the team. Hi, I'm Riley, and I lead the film team here at The Journey. The film team tells stories visually to share what God is doing and what God has done here at The Journey Church. So whether you can write, shoot, edit, direct, or would like to learn any of these things, I would love to have you be a part of the team. My name is Guy Wiley, and I'm over the production team here at The Journey. The production team consists of lights, and sound, and video. We can teach you all aspects of what you're wanting to learn in production. Don't let fear intimidate you from joining the team. We look forward to meeting you. Hello, my name is Tanner Thornton. And I'm Ashley Wiley. And we are part of the worship staff here at the Journey Church. I oversee the bands, and Ashley oversees the vocals. If you have any musical ability singing or playing an instrument, we would love to have you audition and become a part of the team. We have the opportunity to lead worship on Sundays and Wednesdays. But we also have the opportunity outside the main room. We oversee kids' ministry and student ministry as well. So if you are interested in being a part, let us know. Hi, my name is Keith Downey. I lead the camera support here at the Journey Church. We do a lot of the opportunities of cleaning and behind the scene activities, not only on Sunday, but during the week. If you're interested, we'd love to have you part of the team. Hi, my name's Jackie, and I have the honor and privilege of leading our guest experience teams here at the Journey Church, where our number one value is people matter. Colossians 4, 5 says, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most out of every opportunity. People matter to God, therefore they matter to us. Together, our team will provide an experience that exceeds our guest expectations and creates memorable moments that give them the desire to come back again. And it's our desire here at The Journey Church for the experience to be extraordinary. We want our guests and members to feel welcomed at every turn. Guest experience team members will greet guests in the parking lot, golf carts, welcome tent, front doors, guest services, kids check-in, refuel, and in the auditorium. As a member of our guest experience team, you will have the opportunity to create a welcoming and exciting environment that will set the tone of how they receive the message that could change their lives and advance the kingdom. Hey, my name is Bill Shealy. I lead the safety team here at the Journey Church. The safety team exists to create a safe and comfortable environment for our guests. We respond to all medical, all safety, fire alarms here at the church. I would love to have you part of my team. 
Hello, I'm, I'm Ron Steedy, the Outreach Director. We have a facility right next door here. There's this partial uh, half grocery store and half worship center. Uh, we provide groceries for about 700 families a week that come through. There are about 20,000 pounds of groceries, all ran by about 60 to 70 volunteers each week to, to make that thing run, to go out and collect the groceries, bring them back, separate them, shelve them, and get ready for our experiences on Tuesday, Tuesday night, and again on Thursday. Uh, pastor Wrigley, our missions pastor here, said this past week as he was serving over there that this is the closest thing that he has personally come to about being on mission right here in this country. And so I would invite you to come join us. You'll be blessed. Awesome. So there you go. Those are all of our teams. So many opportunities for you to plug in. So as we leave right now in just a moment, make sure you take a hard left. Meet us under the Airnasium. We would love to meet you and hang out for a few minutes. Have a great week. We love you guys.